Today we're going to be talking about body armor and what kind of body armor may or may not be right for you. I've seen a lot of different videos out there where people talk about, say, AR500 body armor or they'll talk about some uh, cheaper options like some of these options from Botech, which are composite materials are either polyethylene and ceramic, some type of mixture thereof. Um, or you got lighter, more concealable body armor kind of like this, which is a 3A concealable vest that I actually wear for work. Um, there are other options. You can buy a concealable vest for these type plates too. Um, I have one right here. So this is basically a slick carrier. Uh, this one's made, I believe, by yeah, Tactical Assault Gear. Um, this is one I bought years ago and I actually threw some shoulder pads on here. I think these are Eagle Industry shoulder pads. 100% necessary if you're going to run steel body armor in this thing, which I did for a while back. Uh, one thing I will say about a concealable vest for rifle body armor, it's concealable, but not really. If you get any sort of polyethylene or ceramic plates, they're going to be so bulky, you're probably going to show up anyway. So um, just take that for what it's worth. Throw that off to the side. Um, so first we'll cover kind of the concealable body armor, which right here... Um, this is a point blank brand body armor. It's level 3A and it's, out of all these, the most comfortable to wear. Um, it covers probably your entire body a lot better than all these other ones do. Like these just cover your front and back unless you get side plates, which again, there's gonna be a gap in between your front plate and your side plates. And here's an example of a side plate that we actually shot. So you can see, you know, it's smaller, it goes in the side. So you can buy stuff that will cover your sides as well, but just know that you're generally gonna get more coverage with something like this. Um, you can see it goes around, I'm a small dude, so I actually had to tuck this around itself. Um, but whenever it's on me, it stretches out to about right here. But anyway, so you can see the side panels cover your side, the front covers, you, you have ballistic material up here and it goes all the way through the side. So the entire material is designed to stop bullets. Now it's only designed to stop pistol calibers. Um, you can also say it'll stop shotgun rounds with Technically, it will, uh, how much back face deformation there would be, uh, or blunt force trauma transferred into your body. I don't know, I don't think I've ever seen a video done on that. But in theory, it'll stop shotgun slugs, buckshot, and it'll stop pretty much every handgun caliber there is. Now there are some handgun calibers that will actually punch through, even 3A. Uh, some of it's a civil defense, I think makes some. It's a nine millimeter round, and it's traveling around uh, 2,000 feet per second, some ridiculous number. And it's a light, like 50 grain bullet, so it's super light for nine millimeter, and it'll actually punch right through those things. Now, how much damage it'll do once it passes through, I don't know, I can tell you. Also, another side note is if you own a Tokarev pistol, the 762 by 25 Tokarev, if you own surplus ammo, uh, that stuff is actually hot enough where it'll go right through this as well. So, just kind of something to take note of. Um, every body armor system has its pros and cons. Um, the, this one is concealable and lightweight. You can com it's comfortable. You can wear, wear it underneath the shirt. Most people aren't going to know you have it. Now, if you're wearing a hoodie or something, you could probably get away with wearing one of these with that concealable plate carrier I showed you. Um, but if you're any other time other than hoodie or jacket weather, you're, this is pretty much your only option that's concealable. And it still kind of prints a little bit. But just know, um, this is what most law enforcement officers wear because, again, it's the most comfortable. Now, granted, they're super hot and sweaty. Uh, if you live in the south or in any humid area, uh, you're going to sweat a lot, just be prepared to be very sticky and sweaty after wearing it for more than a couple hours. But uh, So I just want to put this here just kind of as an option. Today I'm really mostly talking about these kind of plates right here, uh, level 3, level 3 plus, and level 4 body armors, and the different types. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this aside. Now that you've seen it, you know what it looks like. So now we are going to be talking mainly... about those types of body armor right there. So these types are, this one is a level four and it's a ceramic polyethylene hybrid for lack of better words. You have this one, which is a level three and it's an AR 500 plate. Um, it does not have the buildup coating. This is a plate. I think this is the very first body armor I ever bought and it's just a level three. It doesn't have the buildup coat because I didn't know at the time how important that was. And also over here, we have a level three plus plate. It's a ceramic polyethylene plate as well. And both of these ones that say strike face on the front are from Botac. Um, so, but first let's kind of talk about this AR-500 one and kind of my beef with AR-500. So 
I love the company themselves. All the things I bought from them, with the exception of these plates, have been fantastic. Now they specialize in steel body armor, and I mean, kudos, it is a cheaper option, but, and I'll talk about this in a second, these plates over here are roughly the same price as that. So if you get the super basic version of this, where it's not curved, as you can see, this one, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's curved, so it conforms to the body a little bit better. Um, if you don't get that curve and you just get a flat plate, it'll be a little bit cheaper. I think it's somewhere around $70, something like that, per plate. And But if you get it curved, you add another $15. And then if you get the build-up coating, you can add another probably $15, $20 on top of that. So you end up playing, paying pretty much the exact same price as one of these polyethylene ceramic um, options that weigh significantly less. Now, one of the advantages of the steel body armor is it's multi-hit capable more so than these are. Now, these are still multi-hit capable. Now, this one, the level four, is designed to stop armor piercing rounds, which I'll show you here. This is a 30-06 black tip um, armor piercing round. Um, this plate is designed to stop one round of this. Now, it will stop multiple rounds of that 30-06. If you wanna see a good video on what these things will stop, I would suggest going to Mr. Guns and Gears video or his channel. He does a video specifically on both of these plates. Again, this is a level four from Botac. This is a level three plus. Their Battle Steel brand is the name of them. And I'll go ahead and show you the back so you can kind of see. Um, so that's Battle Steel. Um, let's see if you can see read what's on there. So let's see, it says level four and they have a, a validity period of five years. Now, as long as you don't mess these things up or you don't leave them submerged or whatever, they don't get damaged. Um, in some way, shape, or form, they should last significantly longer than five years, but that's just what they put on there probably for liability's sake. Now, this one over here is, let's see if you can read that, is a level three plus, which is a non-NIJ certification that should be changing sometime in the near future. I know that they're probably going to change up how the NIJ ratings work, but this one weighs... If I remember right, I think it weighs around four and a half pounds, something like that. It's a pretty lightweight plate. Just picking it up, it's pretty lightweight. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's level three plus. And what that means is it will stop this bad boy right here. So this is a M193 ball round, which is 55 grain, probably the most common 5.56 round out there. It's just a normal FMJ round, it's 55 grain. Now these things out of a 16 inch barrel or longer, or will actually penetrate level three body armor because it's moving so fast. And if it's moving fast, it punches right through because so the way you beat armor is speed. So this level three, this level three steel plate at closer ranges, or if you have a longer barrel and you reach a certain velocity, this will actually punch through. Now I shot this type of plate, which again is right here showing I shot that 55 grain 5.56, the M193 round at this plate, but it was at 50 yards. And it did stop it out of a 16 inch barrel at 50 yards. So that's just, take note of that. Up close, it would have gone through the steel. So that's one trade off you're getting if you buy just level. So that's true of both. If you get enough velocity, level three won't stop it. So that's where level three plus comes in, where it will actually stop the M193 round because that ceramic uh, strike face on the front breaks up the round, slows it down enough to where the polyethylene material can catch it. So, as you can see, 55 grain bullet. Now, one thing that this will stop, that say, and I may have said earlier that the polyethylene rounds won't stop that. They actually will stop that, the level three will, but the steel um, rounds, or the steel body armor, will stop the 50, the 62 grain green tips. Um, these are pretty cool rounds. They're technically not armor piercing, but they act similar to an armor piercing round. So these will actually punch through polyethylene plates that are level three, just standard polyethylene, not these here. These have ceramic. If you shoot a ceramic plate or if a level three for some reason had a ceramic plate or strike face, it would most likely stop this round and catch it. But any of your just solid polyethylene level three plates will not stop the green tip. Now the steel level three will stop green tip but it won't stop the 55 grain in 193. So that's just kind of something, a plus and minus, I guess, pro and con of the two different types of level three, the polyethylene, which I don't have just a solid polyethylene plate. They're really lightweight, which is pretty cool. 
But since they don't stop green tip, which again is one of the most common rounds out there, I don't consider them a viable option. Just like I don't consider steel a viable option in level three because it won't stop the probably most prevalent round out there, which is a standard 55 grain bullet. So all of that aside, the pros and cons of steel. So this steel plate, if you're shooting it with rounds that it's rated for and it's not gonna stop, so say you're shooting it with a whole bunch of green tips, this plate will keep trucking forever and ever and ever. At some point, sure, a round's gonna go through it, but you can probably sh shoot this thing thousands of times before you get any sort of penetration. So that's cool, some people like it for that, I guess, function. But for me, if you're ever gonna buy steel, well, body armor in general, if you buy any sort of body armor and you take a round to that body armor, as soon as you get the opportunity, replace that sucker. There's absolutely no reason to run around with compromised body armor just because in theory it can stop more rounds. Why would you even take that chance? So with steel, this is a non buildup coat, um, which means it just has a standard coating over the top, uh, which is a, I think it's Paxson coating. I don't remember the exact name of it. It's kind of like a Rhino truck bed liner material. It's pretty durable, it's pretty tough. If you see on here, I'll try to zoom on it so you can see it's not very thick at all. Like it's very thin and all that coating is designed to do, you can kind of see how thick it is right there. All it's designed to do is deflect the spall kind of away from your face as well as protect the steel itself from wear and tear like rust, uh, moisture, stuff like that. And it does do that well. Now, whenever we shot uh, that steel body armor, this it basically is just a smaller version of this, it's a side plate. It did deflect the spall kind of, I wouldn't say all the way to 45 degree angle, but close to 45 degree angle. So if your head, you know, your chin sticks out to here and the round hits about right here, it might deflect it kind of away from your head. Now, granted, if you do that, uh, your arms or whatever, if they're out front of you, they're gonna catch some spall. So, I would absolutely never recommend someone buy level three steel that does not have a buildup coating that's designed to catch spall. Um, I don't understand why AR500 even makes this version anymore. In my opinion, their base model should come with a buildup coating automatically. You should not have to pay extra for that. Or if they want to charge an extra five, ten dollars for something, fine, whatever. But there's absolutely no reason I would never suggest anybody buy this specific plate without the buildup coat. Now that said. There are some advantages for steel. One, it's thin. You can see how thin that is. That is an advantage. And that's pretty much the only advantage. Um, you could say multi-hit capability, which that's fine. Technically, this this plate right here is only, uh, the NIJ rating is only designed to take one round of this, but it'll take multiple rounds. You can look at Mr. Guns and Gears videos and you can see this thing will take 10, 20, 30 rounds, depending on the caliber of whatever it is, if they're spread out and they're not all exactly in the same spot. And it'll stop every single one of them, just like this will. But technically speaking, this plate will stop more rounds than this one would. But again, like I said, if you're taking four or five rounds and you haven't moved and they were lucky enough to hit all in your plate and not spread out amongst your body, I mean, you're having a good day anyways. And again, you should replace that plate. This plate is not designed to sit there and basically be a tank and hold up a shield of this thing in front of you like that's not what these are designed for they're designed for oh I got shot I need to move so I don't get shot again um, but another negative about these specifically the air 500 ones is they weigh a ton these things are incredibly heavy you put two of these things in and you're looking I think they're around eight and a half nine pounds for this specific model if you add the buildup coating add another pound to that um, absolutely ridiculously heavy so whenever you get two of these you're at 20 pounds if you get the buildup coating which again you need if you add side plates to that those things weigh another three and a half pounds something like that so i mean you're you're looking at 25 to 30 pounds somewhere in that range if you get all steel and you encompass your entire body that's ridiculously heavy i don't see a reason to utilize that whatsoever and again for the price these are all essentially going to be about the same price this one is the level three plus was i think 120 dollars this one was $99. This one, if you build a build up, if you buy the build up coating, it's gonna be around $100. So why not buy one of these? Um, that said, there are some disadvantages to either of these as well. So let's go ahead and go over this one. This is probably, if you're wanting the most bang for your buck, this is probably it. Again, this is a level four um, Botac Battle Steel. So they make this, it's a ceramic polyethylene panel, as you can see right there. Um, it's level four, so it'll stop armor piercing rounds. That's what it's designed for, and it'll stop anything under that. 
Now, this weighs five and a half pounds, I believe. Um, other level four body armor out there um, will stop, well, um, will stop, they'll stop the same as this, but they're, they're heavier. So I also at one point owned a RMA body armor, which those are actually certified by the NIJ. They're a little bit more expensive. They're about $125 for a level four plate. So you spend an extra 25 bucks, you get something that's certified, which means back base deformation, all that will meet NIJ uh, standards. This one is tested, um, I assume by Battle Steel, uh, to those same standards, but whether or not they're actually 100% the exact same testing, I doubt it, um, but you can see right here, um, it's tested in accordance uh, to that standard. Now this does not mean that it's certified to that standard. It just means that the private company who produces this plate tests it to that standard and they said that it passed. So you may or may not trust the company, that's fine. But again, for the price, it's kind of hard to beat. Um, and after seeing multiple videos on YouTube, that's another data point you can add to whether or not you trust one of these plates or buying something that is NIJ certified. So this one right here weighs five and a half pounds, so that's really lightweight for a level four, which is what I was getting at with the RMA plates. The RMA weigh around, I think they're around eight pounds. So that's getting close to this one. Still a pound less than these, or about half pound less than these, but it's significantly heavier than this. Now the RMA plates are about the same size as this, and here's a disadvantage to this level four plate. So this is your level three plus. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. So here's your level four on top, and I wanna show you the size comparison. These are both 10 by 12 plates. Now you can see on that side it sticks out and on that side it sticks out. So you're losing about an inch. Um, now granted this is a multi-curve plate, the level four is. So what that means is it's curved. So you can see right here it's curved this direction and it's curved that direction. So it kind of encompasses your body a little bit better. It kind of forms fit to your chest a little bit better. But in order to achieve that light weight they cut off a little bit more of the swimmer's cut here where you there which you could argue is better because you can shoulder your rifle a little bit easier that way but you lose coverage so now with this one the level three plus it's designed to stop pretty much everything the level three should stop including the green tip and the m193 the 55 grain um this one is actually a little bit bigger so this is about the same size as the rma plates um they're the same coverage which is why the rma weigh more than the bowtac ones do uh, because that extra weight and also since they're NIJ certified something I've noticed they're a little bit thicker so they have a little bit more padding or material or maybe it's whatever polyethylene type material they use there's a little bit more on the backing so it doesn't bulge you don't get as much back base deformation so one thing I would suggest if you go with cheaper plates like these is go ahead and get some I guess trauma pads to go behind I would suggest trauma pads with pretty much any plate you get even if it's a standalone because it's just gonna make your life easier unless you're just trying to be super cheap but I would suggest getting that because even though these will stop bullets, you may get some back face deformation that depending on how thick you are, how much body fat you have, or if you're just straight on bone or if you're skinny like me, um, it's going to affect different body types differently. So if you got a little bit of cushion there, you may be okay. But if you don't, you may want that extra padding. So just something to take note of. Um, but again, the RMA are heavier because they're a full size plate. So that's something to take note of as well. Now the level three does not the multi-curve it is just a single curve so it's curved this way but it doesn't have a curve this direction so i haven't noticed that to be a real issue i'm a pretty skinny dude it fits fine to me i don't have any issues with it now this is lighter than the level four these are around four and a half pounds so you save about a pound a piece and it may not sound like a lot but just estimate an ar mag fully loaded 30 rounds it weighs about a pound so by just buying these plates you can add two extra mags or save that much weight, um, which may not sound like a lot, but whenever you put on all your gear, you really notice the difference. And I'll tell you, you really notice the difference whenever you go from steel over to even this ceramic plate, which saves you about you know three, four pounds per plate. And again, you add that for two plates, that's eight pounds, significant weight savings. One of the guys I work with, he also owns a build-up coat of the AR500, and it is a huge difference whenever he took these out and put these in. He was just amazed on how much lighter it was. So again, something to take note of. Um, that's really all I can think of. Again, I highly suggest not buying steel body armor because there's really no advantage. I take that back. There is one other advantage other than slimness and that is you do get protection. Now, if you buy this, the buildup coating, the small buildup coating, which absolutely, if you're gonna buy steel, you have to get that, no exception. 
Um, if you hit anywhere near the edge on the steel, it will stop the round um, on any of these plates. It'll stop the round. Now on these, if you get so close to the edge, you may not hit the ceramic material, which means it may not catch the bullet. It needs a certain amount of area on all sides of the bullet to be able to catch that. So in theory, probably about an inch, half an inch, somewhere around the edge is not technically going to stop a bullet. And that goes for most ceramic type plates. Um, so that's just something to take note of. With the steel, it will stop it no matter where it hits, kind of that edge to edge protection. But on their build up coating with the spall protection, if you hit near the edge, anywhere near the edge, now I, I've seen videos where people shot, you know, somewhere an inch or two, somewhere near the about right here or so, it'll stop the bullet and the spall will stop in all these different directions, but the spall will not be caught by the stuff on the edge because there's not enough material there to catch it. So that's just something, again, to take note of. So, um, we have a what the spall do or how dangerous this spall. I don't remember the name of the video, but it's how dangerous this spall. And again, it's where we shot that plate and we put pork chops on top of where the spall was going to go and it tore up that pork chop. So imagine that your arms or your legs, your groin, your neck. You really don't want that. So again, even if you bought the build up coating and say you took a round somewhere up here near the edge of the plate while you'll be alive, um, the top of that. <laughs> is not gonna stop the spall, which means you've got a bunch of spall that potentially just went into your neck. So that's gonna be a bad day for you. Now you could argue, well, at least it stopped the bullet, and sure, there's something to be said for that, and maybe if it hit up here on here, it wouldn't stop it at all. So again, pros and cons in each, but I would say overall, probably your best bang for your buck is gonna be this level four plate. Um, if you're wanting a little bit more coverage, um, and you want to be sure that it meets the NIJ certification, all that kind of stuff, and you don't really care about weight, but you want ceramic and not steel, I would suggest probably RMA, which again, I don't have on here, but I have owned at one point. I just ended up selling them because I didn't need them. Um, if you're looking for kind of a compromise of everything where it'll stop most rounds except armor piercing, I mean, if you don't expect to be going up against, you know, your grandpa with a M1 Grand with using black tips or even like, you know, uh, armor piercing 308 or something like that, which is kind of a weird, odd caliber, this will stop pretty much every normal threat you could come across. And again, you save a pound per plate and it gets more coverage than this one does because the cut is a little bit larger. So those are kind of the pros and cons. Um, if you have any questions, sorry I rambled for a good long while, um, but feel free to ask them down below. Um, I try to answer again all the comments and questions that we have, but if you like this kind of content, go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe. All right, appreciate it. Have a good one, guys.